Hello, thank you for joining me today. Um, my name is Ali Zaka. I'm a techno-functional consultant with Ably Pro. And today uh, is the fifth video in a series of videos where we're talking about Salesforce field service. In particular, today we're going to be talking about uh, service resources and uh, territories. So the topics today is, well, you know, how do we create a service resource? What is a service resource? Um, preferred resources on a particular work order. Um, yeah. And then uh, we'll talk about um, how we uh, assign service appointments to a particular uh, service resource. And then also we'll touch upon um, territory management and the dispatcher console. So what I'd like to do is jump in to the org. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, before we actually add a user, we need to make sure that they're set up correctly in the system. So what we're gonna do is um, we're gonna go to setup and on the setup, we're gonna go to users. <clears throat> And we're going to add a resource called Bobby Fisher. Let's click on this individual here. So the first thing that we need to check is make sure that they have the correct uh, permission sets and licenses. So we're going to go over the permission sets. We're going to do edit. And these are the two licenses that we want this individual to have for right now. Um, we're going to be setting them up as a field technician. These would be the individuals that actually go out and perform the work in the field. So we need a field service resource license and field service resource permissions. So we already have that. We just click on save. Next, what we're going to do is we're going to jump over to, I can have it up. Well, Assuming you have the uh, field service managed package installed, if you type in field, you should see these two apps here. What we want to do is go to uh, field service and click on service resources. There's actually two ways of setting up a, um, a resource within uh, field service. One is directly here by the uh, field service app, and the other way is via the uh, guided setup. So I'm going to click on service resource, click on new uh, name. We're going to type in here Bobby Fisher. Now look them up right there. Gantt label. The Gantt label is um, on the Gantt itself. You can give a descriptive name to describe. Um, what type of individual this is within your organization. So uh, for our purposes, we're going to just say heck and just say tier two, tier two. So it's, it's almost like a description. Um, you have a number of options here. You have technician, dispatcher, crew, agent, assets, and planner. Uh, the two most common ones that you would set up would be a technician and a dispatcher. For this individual, we're going to consider them a technician. Um, the other option we have here is capacity-based. Capacity-based is for a contractor, typically. Let's say you have an, a contractor or an individual that only works 20 hours in a week. So basically, you're capping them. So if you check this off, when the scheduler runs and this individual is allocated only to be able to work 20 hours a week. They won't be given work more than 20 hours a week. So that's typically for a contractor. Uh, we're gonna set this individual up as if they're a regular full-time employee. Once again, you can put a description in here. It's just useful and a good practice. Um, we're gonna make this individual active and we're not gonna check this off for right now, but this is if you wanna include them in the automatic um, scheduling an optimization engine that comes with uh, field service. So we're gonna click on save. So what we've done is we've added this user to the system, the field service, they're a technician. 
we're going to look at the related list here. So you have a couple of options in here. Um, we just added this individual. So obviously they don't have any service appointments assigned to them. We have service resource skills and territories. And also you would have absences if they're on, uh, if they've uh, requested a uh, vacation uh, or they're going to be sick or things of that nature. So <clears throat> what we're going to actually do here, we're going to go to service resource skills. I'm going to give this individual some skills. So we're going to say we, they have fiber endpoint. And the skill level is 99, which is 99.9 .9 would be the highest. So it goes from zero to 99.9. .9. And this is a required field in terms of when that is effective. So we're going to just pick tomorrow, yesterday's day. We're going to give this individual another skill. Say fiber, and once again, we're going to give them 99. And start date. Start date is when, if they, have, for example, they had taken a certificate, um, and just to know when they had taken that certificate or, where that, or when that skill was available. I mean, it might be in the past, it might be in the future, but you can, you can share that both ways. Click on save. So this individual has these two skills listed. Um, now we need to say, okay, where does the individual work? Um, let's, if you are argument sake, you, you were talking about America. Uh, you know, you could have multiple territories um, within a within a state, within a country, and things of that nature. So we're going to click on new here, and we have a couple of predefined um, territories that we have set up. So we have Miami, New York City, Dallas, Houston, Austin. So this individual, we're going to say that they work in Dallas. Now, you have a couple of options here also. You have their territory type, primary, secondary, and relocation. Um, we touched upon this in a previous video. If the individual is just in one area, this is where they work, it would be primary. Secondary would be where if they're providing coverage when needed, um, when people aren't available or when there's high volume and things of that nature. Uh, and then the other one would be a location. Uh, location, relocation, pardon me. Relocation would be where if there's an emergency uh, and you need this individual uh, in another territory for a limited time period, say one week, one month, argument sake, let's say there was a tornado in New York City and they have lim limited resources. So you can define this individual uh, with their territory as relocation, and they could be working in New York City for one month. So anyway, we're going to pick primary here. I'm going to click on save. Oh, and the date, start date. So as you can see here, we have them listed as Dallas for Bobby Fisher. Okay. So next, what we want to do is we want to go to work order. So there's a couple of things that we can do here. We have a predefined, we, we have a work order here, 0, 1, 1. And if we click on related, you can see here you have, um, for this particular work order, the skills required a fiber to endpoint, and you have fiber. Um, I don't have what I'm looking for. So on this work order, zero one one. Um, if you notice here, we have resource preferences. So we're just going to click on that. So what this allows you to do is, if you click on here. Um, reference type. We have preferred, required, and excluded. So what this allows you to do is, on a particular work order, on a job, you can say you have a preferred field technician, a resource that you want to perform this work. Or you could say required, where this person or this individual is the only person that can service that job or do that job. Or you could also say excluded, 
Excluded would be where, let's say, a customer wasn't happy with a particular individual, with the work that they had performed, and they don't want them coming out and doing that job again or another job. Uh, you would just exclude them. So what that would, how that would work is when the um, scheduler um, does its thing, um, it'll look at it'll look at these here, and if it's excluded, that individual, whoever you have listed, would not be um, allowed to do the work. And if it's required, only that individual will be able to perform that service appointment. Um, so we're just going to say preferred, um, and then you can actually select a resource here. So we're just going to say Bobby Fisher. Let me say seven. All right. So that we have. And so now what we want to do is we're going to go to Well, actually, before we continue, what I want to do is what I had said before. If we go to the other the other way of adding a uh, service resource, um, if we come to the field service admin app, go to the guided setup, and the guided setup here have service create service resources, and you can add um, your service resources here. So, for example, here we already added Bobby Fisher, so you can see Bobby Fisher is listed here. Bobby Fisher, this is the username. This is the label that we have on the Gantt, and they're in Dallas, and you can see it's listed as an active user. So you would just select your user here, put in their name, label, and then select the territory, and then add them. So this is the other way that you can um, add a user. We're going to go back to the uh, field service app. And what we're going to do is click on field service. Now, as you can notice, we have nothing listed here on the Gantt, and we don't have any service appointments. So what we need to verify is um, what view do we have? So currently, it's showing New York. We don't have any technicians assigned in New York, and we don't have any service appointments. So we're going to uncheck that, check Dallas. And once again, these are our service resources, and this is the... Uh, dispatcher console so this is the the view that the dispatcher has when they're working so we clicked on uh, territories uh, say we want to look at dallas so now that we have dallas up we can see that bobby fisher is associated to that territory which is dallas you can see here um, that Gantt label that we had added, PEC tier two. Um, and currently they don't have any service appointments um, associated to them. So if we take this service appointment, and this is just the, the one that we had just looked at, 011, we can just drag this over here. And now this individual has that um, service appointment, Bobby Fisher. And they don't have any um, error messages because they have, for that particular service appointment, let's actually go back to service appointments here and just show you. Let's go to the related list. Actually, let's go to work orders. You go to the related, the required skills. So the required skills for this particular work order is fiber to endpoint and the skill level is 60, and also the skill required is fiber, and that's a 75 skill level. So when we had set up Bobby Fisher, we had actually given him 99, both these skills. So he has the adequate skills and the skill levels to perform that work. So when we actually gave that, that service appointment to them, to Bobby Fisher, we didn't get any um, error messages. So that's a quick overview of how you add a service resource, um, how you would add the skills for them, um, and then if on a work order um, preferences in terms of um, if they were preferred 
required or excluded resource for a particular job. Um, so that's, once again, that was a very quick overview of what, um, of how you would set up skills. Um, if you have any questions, um, we're more than happy to answer those questions for you. Um, and we will get back to you. Uh, once again, thanks for joining me today. Um, once again, any questions, um, you can contact Ably Pro. Here's our contact information, and we're more than happy to help you out. Uh, thank you, and have a good day.